Greetings, this is the Reading Instruction Show. I'm Dr. Andy Johnson. Let's see if we can do some learning, eh? About eye movement and reading. When we read text, our eyes do not move in a straight line across the page. They make skips from word to word called saccades. It only seems like that. Let me explain. We have three visual regions, the foveal, the parafoveal, and the peripheral. The foveal is about the size of a grape at arm's length. We can see things clearly there. That's the only region we can see things clearly. Parafoveal surrounds it, and then the peripheral, everything is all fuzzy there. Parafoveal, it's kind of fuzzy. You really can't make it out. Parafoveal, 24 to 30 letters, not very clearly. Uh, foveal three to six, peripheral, everything else. Okay, that's a, an example of what it looks like. If your eyeball would stay absolutely still, that's the picture you would see. The foveal, the parafoveal, and the peripheral, if your eyeball stayed absolutely still. That's important. But the question to ask is, with this very small in-focus viewing area, how is anyone able to read more than 10 words per minute because we can only see clearly that little three to six letters at a time. And here's the answer. It's the top-down flow of information that enables efficient readers to quick to, to, to read quickly and efficiently. And I'll explain a little bit. And again, as we read, our brain fills in the blanks and we're using phonetic, semantic, and syntactic information to predict what the next word might be. The brain is a meaning-making machine, a predicting machine, not a sounding out words machine. So our eyes fixate right there. We can see four to six letters. That's the foveal. The parafoveal, we tend to skew more in front. All right, six letters, okay. And then this would be the peripheral. How are we able to see that? Well, we are filling in the blanks, using all this information to make guesses about what the next word is or to predict or to fill in the blanks. As you see, there is 10 times more information flowing from the cortex down than from the thalamus up during the act of reading. We are using what's in our head to make sense of what's on the page. Now, here's the thing about your eyes. They act like a scanner, meaning that they have to move around in order to make sense of things. The grocery scanner, you have to move that thing in order for the little thing to see the, see the bars. Let me explain. If you would keep your eyes focused just on the blue circle, don't move your eyeballs at all, you'd see all the stuff out here gradually fading away. When we look at things, we don't look straight. Our eyeballs move around and take little fixations and little snapshots, and our brain is filling in the blanks. We never stare straight ahead. <clears throat> As an example, take a look at this picture, and where do your eyeballs take you? Probably something like this. This is eye movement research. They have scanners that look at your eyes and see where you go when you read or when you look at a picture. Yes, we tend to look like that. Our eyeballs never stay still. We have these little fixations. It's moving around like a hummingbird taking little snapshots. And we create this picture of reality based on the snapshots and we're filling in the blanks. Now, you're, next time you're driving down the highway, you think you're looking straight ahead and your eyes are on the road, but your eyes are never on the road. Your eyeballs are going like this, taking little snapshots. They never stare straight ahead. Your eyeballs are always moving, even if your eye, if your head is uh, staring straight ahead. That's how we create a clear picture of reality. If we look straight ahead, we'd see just a very little grape at arm's length and everything else would be fuzzy. But to create a clear picture, we take the little saccades, the little snapshots, and our brain is filling in the blanks. 
So let's look at eye movement and MISQ analysis. And always get used to watching the eyeballs of your readers as you read, especially when you're tutoring. That tells you a lot. You can see how they're processing the information. And you'll notice efficient readers read smoothly. Struggling readers, their eyes are going like this, stilted. Saccades are the little jumps or skips that the eyes make from word to word. Here is one example of eye movement equipment. As the person is reading, it's tracking where the eyes are. The fixations are where the eyes stop, and you can only see clearly that which you fixate on. <coughs> and regressions are when the eye goes back. We think we're reading like this, but we're reading more like that. We don't fixate on every word. Now remember, we can only clearly see that which we fixate on. Eye movement studies show that 30 to 40% of the words are skipped right over. We think we see them, we think we fixate because our brain is filling in the blanks. Now, the length of the word didn't matter as far as which words were skipped and which words weren't. The predictability of the words and content words that are important tend to be fixated on more than uh, the little words as we see, the function words. And let's see the path. The path is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our eyes, we don't even fixate in order. The dot represents where the eyeballs actually stopped. The larger the dot, the longer the time it's spent on it. So it fixated right there, there, there. And remember, we can only see about that much clearly, about six letters. So our brain is filling in the blank. It just gives us a sense of the whole. Our brain is filling in the blanks. <laughs> Again, we skip more function words. They serve a grammatical function and fewer content words, those that carry semantic meaning. We gain information from the parafoveal to recognize words. And again, the cortex is used to direct the eyes during the reading, not the print. It's that top-down flow of information. And brain imaging shows that there is almost 10 times more information flowing down than moving up during the process of reading. Rayner, 1996, he said the predictability of the word affects the fixation time and the skip. Again, we're more likely to skip predictable words and our brain is filling in the blanks and more likely to fix it on less predictable words. Interesting study by Eric Paulson. Are oral reading word omissions and substitutions caused by careless eye movement? So his focus was on eye movement and the words admitted or substituted during oral reading. This uh, research study of his, a very interesting one. Now he looked at miscue. So this is eye movement miscue analysis or Emma. Eye movement or miscue is what when what is said during oral reading doesn't match what's on the page. We don't call that errors. We call that is a, a miscue. Now if the sentence is run to the top of the hill. There's different types of miscues. A meaning disrupting miscue would disrupt the meaning of the sentence. Rat to the top of the hill. <clears throat> that doesn't make any sense at all. It is disrupting meaning. Meaning maintaining miscues fits within the sentence. Instead of run to the top of the hill, the reader might say runs to the top of the hill or rush to the top of the hill. Meaning is maintained. And that's an indication that <clears throat> they're reading beyond surface structure. They're reading for deep meaning. And that's a good thing. Meaning disrupting, but grammatically correct. That's just putting in the correct grammar word, a noun for a noun, but it disrupts. And self-correction. Self-corrections are good. Self-corrections are when you stop, it doesn't make sense, you'll go back and you correct. 
that represents mature reading behavior. That represents metacognition, is what I'm reading making sense. His findings were readers were likely to visually examine, fixate right on words that were miscued or skipped. Even though it stopped right on that word, they still sk often skipped the word. Interesting, interesting. Again, the brain is filling in the blanks. Emitted this skipped word, creating meaning, reading at uh, deep meaning versus surface structure. And we often substituted words even though the reader fixated right on it. The reader fixated, stop right there clearly, but the reader still substituted words. Again, filling in the blanks. If you're reading for only surface structure, you're not reading for deep meaning. Most words that were skipped were read without miscues. Interesting, even though that these words are skipped, they were still able to read them without miscues. And again, remember that fixation point, that fovio, three to six letters. Fixations did not occur in the order in which they appeared on the text. We saw that before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You get the idea. This is the path that the eye took. Readers regress 10 to 15% of the time. Conclusions that eye movement reflects a meaning-making process, not a sounding out word process. Readers don't look at every letter or every word, and efficient readers do what's necessary and most efficient to make sense of the text. Reading is creating meaning not sounding out words. And in doing this, they engaged all three cueing systems, the semantic, the syntactic, and the phonological cueing systems. The big idea, effective reading instruction reinforces the way the brain naturally creates meaning with print. All right, this has been the Reading Instruction Show. Hopefully you learned a thing or two.